Or has she never been there? She never went to either in I, life. It's definitely been there in spirit. <laughs> but I, in life. We have had things happen that I, I'm like, I might start crying if I talk yeah, about it too no, much. No, I feel like she's like laughing. We had a really, really serious problem that was going to cost me like tens of thousands of dollars that I did not have at the time. Yes. And I freaked out. And I went downstairs to deal with this issue. And I'm like hyperventilating. I have like my plumbers there, everyone. Like we had not even just the plumbers, like we had to have like the town come in and expect stuff. So there were a lot of, a lot of people and something in my head just said, it's done, hit the test button. And I slammed it and everything worked just fine. And no one knows why. And I walked back upstairs to my cafe and all of a sudden the song, the plate at her funeral came on (gasps) and I just started like bawling. Oh my God. I'm covered like, in, in, front, in front of all these like worker men. And I'm just like, I'm just really excited that I don't have to pay you all this money. <laughs> like, but oh really it was God. like, I knew, I oh, knew yeah. she was there. Yes. At like a hundred percent. I'm covered in chills. Um, also do you, I, I feel like you don't because I feel like the message is that you should. Um, is there something like a little tchotchke for her in the cafe somewhere? I'm seeing like a tiny little something like up on a shelf, kind of just tucked uh-huh. away. On top of my bakery case, I have a jar and I have it labeled pennies from heaven because I believe oh, that's she what leaves it is. me chills. I, I believe she leaves is. me little pennies everywhere and I always stick it in the jar and I always tell everyone who works for me, that is not a change jar. Yeah. Do not touch it. And it's just where I like, and like whenever it's there, it's like, oh, okay, she's with me. I like, I like it. Yeah. That's totally her. Wow, and she specifically said she wants you to know that she feels light and free now. Good, because I do need to know that. Thank you. You're one of the only people I've ever been able to connect with. So I really appreciate that. All right, well, cool. That was awesome. Thank you. You're I really appreciate that. Good reading. That was great. What else are we going to talk about? Oh, all kinds of stuff. So when you get into that space, when you start your readings, like, like how do you get there and how do you know you're there? When I was first coming into my mediumship, I didn't always have like an on and an off. And I discovered quickly that that was something that would be very important to me because I can tell you one time I was dead asleep in the middle of the night and my, my sister-in-law, my husband's sister, who also happens to be my best friend in the whole world. She also happens to be my assistant now. Oh, wow. But this is before any of that. Um, well, before the assistant thing, I was just starting to kind of, I don't know if I had even really talked to anybody about it. I had told her, I told her before I told my husband, (laughs) her father-in-law, her husband's father had just died. And so I had asked her that day if she would mind asking her mother-in-law if I could practice on them, um, sometime. And he came to me in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. And woke me up and said, knock, knock, it's Dave, like loud as hell oh, in my wow. room. And so I had to wake up in the middle of the night and do a reading. <laughs> like I just typed everything yeah. he told me on my phone in the notes. Wow. And then I texted her in the morning and I was like, so Dave woke me up last night. <laughs> Here is what he said. And, um, you know, everything was really accurate. I, I, I like named plants that they have in their house. Like he was like, this plant is ugly <laughs> that you bought. Like yeah. it was just really funny. Like. Oh. Little stuff. You know, it's always good when you're first practicing and you're first starting out when things are like accurate. But, um, so that made me feel good. And that was one of the things that like helped me keep going. But since then, I have learned that I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night by yeah. spirits. Yeah. You gotta set those and, boundaries. Um, like I might have mentioned this even last time I was on, but I, for a long time, when I first was coming into this, I, I drive past Danvers State, that little mm-hmm. back road through the cornfields. On my way to uh, my day job at the dance studio, I work like a few hours a week at a dance studio, and I always would cut through, and um, I had to stop because I would hear people crying, I oh, would wow. like, see things, yeah. and I, so I've had to work really hard to learn um, to turn it on and to turn it off. So one of the ways that I've done that is I have asked Spirit to help me develop like a physical sensation and like a physical signal that oh, I'm like connected. 
Yeah. So I always kind of like meditate a little and get in the zone. And usually if I'm doing a reading and you see me close my eyes, that's actually me trying to go a little deeper and trying to get the connection like a little stronger. If I'm staring off into space, it's because I'm listening or like watching as a message is like coming in. Yeah. So the like, physically, the way that I personally feel it is um, it actually feels almost a little like high, which is such a weird thing to say, no, that, but I feel that, very yeah, like sense. floaty, spacey. Mm -hmm. And I also often will see a flash of white light on my third eye. Like when I connect, that's almost like my, okay, you're on. That's like, for me, that's like my on signal. And then after I do a reading, I always like say a little prayer of release, mm -hmm. whoever. Um, so we can go about my business. <laughs> cool. But I have to be careful because, like, I don't even like to meditate after I've had any wine because, like, I like to, I like my wine. I like my yeah, white yeah. wine, nice glass of white wine at night. Okay. And I'm I have you. to be careful. Like, I like to meditate myself to sleep a lot, and I have to be careful if I've been drinking because alcohol, as we know, lowers our inhibitions, and therefore it lowers your boundaries. And that's when I have, like, Shadow people show up in my room, oh. uninvited ghosts. Mm. I, for like two weeks, had, oh, this actually still gives me the creeps even talk about it. And I'm hoping talking about it doesn't invite her back in. <laughs> I have to sage much tonight. But I had this woman that she must have died in like a horseback riding accident, but she on a horse would circle my bed at night, just, just around my bed in circles and whenever I would try and talk to her she wouldn't answer me she would just turn and I would see she had a big like hole in the back of her head oh my like, gosh I think she must have hit her head and I've asked about it and I don't know like I've never figured out who it was but I do know there was some kind of like someone I know that works with horses had said oh you know actually a friend of mine died it kind of sounds like her but it, it was they weren't like close enough for me to yeah root out or anything but Maybe it was probably this woman. I don't know. But wow. I have had a couple of incidents that have come to me in my bed. <laughs> it's always as I'm falling asleep that I've figured out the next day. Like I've posted about it and then got a message that said, oh, yeah, that was my person. Or, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. This happened. That's wild. That's really wild. Yeah. Because I know a lot of mediums work very differently. Yeah. So a lot of people... They'll kind of just see with their third eye. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hear, but then some people see like full body apparitions of people coming. Yeah. So do you work kind of within all of those or one or the other? So or? there are two different ways that you can perceive your clairs. So like clairvoyance is the clear vision that you're seeing or like Clear audience is when you hear it mm -hmm. and you can do it subjectively or objectively. Subjectively is like when I hear the voices in my head, when I see in my mind's eye, like a vision, it's almost like the way that you recall a memory, like when you see it and you can picture the details, it's like in your mind's eye. And then there's objectively, which is when like I see a person in my room or I hear a voice physically in my ears if it was in the room with me. Yeah. And those are for me much fewer and farther between. Mm -hmm. Um, it's usually, subjective I can tell you that the objective stuff especially the shadow people in my room which I'm not a fan of those are usually like if I've been drinking or if I'm really really exhausted tired in this but I always my entire life I've had a adult man yell my name Jamie like that like oh wow and I can't even tell you, growing up I would constantly go running to my dad and be like what hmm. happened am I in trouble <laughs> like yeah. what did I do like has woken me up from the dead sleep. Hmm. And so I get that still to this day all the time. And then since I've had kids, the other one that I get is um, mama. Somebody cries mama. Oh. And I go and I run and I tuck on my kids and they're asleep. Yeah. And it started happening like before my daughter could even talk. <laughs> oh, wow. So I was like, I knew it wasn't her. That one creeps me out a little. I remember there was one time I was on a train and I was so tired. We'd spent the weekend in New York and it was like, I barely slept. And someone was just whispering over and over in my ear, but like in such a way that I could like feel the breath. I kept looking at the guy behind me like, oh, me gosh. The creep. Yeah. Oh, that's spooky. That's very spooky. During my reading, you brought up spirit guides. And yeah. how would you say, how do you differentiate like, how do you know when you hear that person talking in your ear saying your name over and over again or the man yelling at you? Like, how do you differentiate something like that 
from like a spirit guide? Well, or what do you what do you feel is a spirit guide? I mean, I think we all have a a team of angels, ancestors, past loved ones. It can be animals. You can have spirit guide animals. Like, that are all around us all the time. And their only mission for being with us, they've been, like, assigned to us to help us feel good, to help us get what we want, to help us fulfill our soul's purpose. Because given this line of work, I now fully 110% believe in reincarnation as, like, yeah. in my opinion, it's, like, fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, you come into your present life with missions that you're supposed to achieve and things you're supposed to learn and goals that you have. And not everybody does it and that's okay. You just go and you try again in your next lifetime. Um, but they're there to help guide you on that path so that you can, so you can learn the lessons so you can move on, you know, and not have to repeat those things or yeah, evolve. You have your spirit evolve before the next life. So I think that spirit guides are people who have evolved greatly and are now given like that job as opposed to, having to bring card. Okay. And let's say you just want to know what your life lesson is. Like, I would like to know what mine is, for example, yeah. because then I feel like I could just work on it, bang it out. My life's great. And then I can move forward. Yeah. Like, are there ways people can do that? So connecting to your intuition, I would say, um, connecting to your spirit guides. That was probably one of the most important things that I did in developing my own gifts and my own leadership was developing a relationship with my spirit guides. We have a bunch, um, and a lot of them are kind of for different things. Okay. You can also have angel, you know, and archangels that are around you that you're not the only person they work with. They go for multiple people. Um, for me, my thing was I really wanted to connect to like my primary spirit guide. And so I started by um, doing spirit guide meditations on YouTube, like just free ones, listening to them. Okay. Um, and in those meditations, you know, they take you through some stuff where you see and meet your spirit guide. Maybe they take you through some ways to um, learn their name. And I've actually taught workshops on that where I've been the person doing the guided meditation. And my tips during that, um, if you're in a meditative state, you can ask your spirit guide to reach out and touch you and ask whatever. Don't dismiss the sensations that you're feeling. Like maybe it'll be a tingle on your arm. Maybe it will be a chill up your spine. Maybe, um, you know, your palms will be hot and sweaty, something like that. Ask them to touch you. And then that'll be kind of like your signature from them. Ask okay. for them to do that. And then, um, you can also try asking them for their name. Mm, that's another good thing. And you just go with whatever the first thing you hear is, no matter how weird it is. And when I do spirit guide readings for people, as opposed to like past life, I mean, as opposed to like mediumship past loved ones. Um, a lot of the times, you know, the spirit guides will tell me their names and I'll be like, that's a weird name, but okay, I'll say it. There's been times where I've looked it up and it's like an art, ar- an art ar- oh, wow. exists. Or like I saw, I did a reading for a friend not that long ago where I saw this beautiful woman, like kind of floating on earth and she looked like floating above and she had these bell sleeves, dress with bell sleeves. And she looked, she had like animals all around her. She just looked like this like earth mother goddess. And then um, I was listening to a Gabby Bernstein audiobook, and she was talking about the archangels. And the second she was describing Ariel, I was like, holy crap, that's what I saw. Wow. And so I Googled. Yeah. And the picture looked exactly like what I saw. I sent it to my friend and she was like, oh my God, that's crazy. That's exactly what you said. That makes so much sense for me. Like the description, the descriptions of her. Um, really resonated with her. So you can, don't dismiss anything, no matter how weird it is, because it may be someone that, yeah, it may be an angel that exists, it may be one of your ancestors. So for me personally, I don't know a lot about my spirit guides, but I feel like there is an Emily who's always around me. I don't know if she's a spirit guide or an angel, but I've always thought that's a weird name. Like that's a unique name for like a spirit guide. guide. Emily, what? I think she's probably one of your spirit guides. And a lot of the times, too, I find when I do spirit guide readings, I find that our spirit guides are connected to us because of past lives. Okay. Like, they were connected to you in a past life. Maybe it was your mother, and she wants to take care of you now, you know, in this form, or maybe it was, you know, various things. So what I would do then is, do you meditate? I do. I would meditate and call to her. 
okay. specifically by name and don't discount. The truth of it is they don't care what you call them. Okay. They tell 